All right, so again, I'm just going to continue on the notes from last week, <clears throat> and it might be a good idea for you to relabel it. You know, in our 8485 folder, I'm just going to go to edit and I'm going to rename this graphing trig functions. And that way, once we start to take a quiz, it'll be pretty easy for you guys to find, uh, go back and see what we were doing. Just like the last quiz that we took on Friday was on unit circle and solving trig equations. So, you know, I would know exactly where my uh, notes are for that. So <clears throat> for graphing trig functions, uh, this is stuff that we did on Friday, but we started off with a basic sine graph and a cosine graph. So those two, we got to get down you know, 100%. And once we get those down, we can grow from there a little bit. This, they both have the same period, a period of two pi. And so when we graphed them, we did our four notches here. And so then we, but our last notch was at two pi. And so then we did pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. We split it up into four equal sections. Uh, it has an amplitude of one and the amplitude is, you know, by definition, it's the absolute value from the uh, minimum to the maximum, but, or half, I'm sorry, the, from the minimum to the maximum. But if you just think of it as kind of like the distance from the midline or the middle of the graph to the min or the max, it's how high up it goes or how low it goes. And the reason this has uh, an amplitude of one is because the unit circle has a radius of one, okay? So we had the sine and the cosine graph. And then after we had those two parent functions, <clears throat> we did some transformations of them. So for our transformations, we had uh, y equals a sine of bx minus c plus d. And we really focused on just the amplitude, which is the number out front, Okay, the absolute value of that is the amplitude. And the period, and that is changed by the number in front of the X. I do believe we also did a vertical shift that just shifts the graph up or down, um, but we didn't do anything with the C, that's a phase shift, that moves it left and right. And we're not gonna do any of that today, uh, but we will in, in the future a little bit. All right, so <clears throat> uh, let's take a, couple of graphs. If we wanted to graph a function, sorry, uh, y equals, let's say, about four cosine of five x. Okay. So we're graphing y equals four cosine of five x. Now that number out in front, that's gonna be our amplitude. So we would say, you know, the amplitude is equal to four. That's how high the graph is gonna get and then how low it's gonna get. It's gonna go up to positive four, down to negative four. Up to positive four, down to negative four. This number right here is going to designate what our period is going to be. The period is always two pi over that number, okay, for sine and cosine. So the period is going to be two pi over five. It's kind of a weird number, but that is our period. So we're gonna graph this thing. So when we graph the cosine graph, I'll put my four notches, and that's gonna take us through one period of the graph. And I think the easiest way is to start with that last one is always whatever our period is going to be. In this case, it's two pi over five. And then I have to figure out what these other three are. So my suggestion is, find the one that's halfway there because taking half of something typically isn't bad. Half of two pi over five is one pi over five.
or you could get that by multiplying the denominator by two, you know, and writing that as two pi over 10, which of course is also pi over five. So either way, you know, taking half of something. So I find the last one, take half of it to get that middle one. And I can do the same thing here. To, to get this one, I take half of the pi over five. Half of pi over five will be pi over 10. So we're just multiplying the denominator by two. And so once I get that first one, that's my scale. So this is really one over 10. That's two over 10. That guy's gonna be three pi over 10. So it's one over 10, two over 10, three over 10, and four over 10. Well, four over 10, of course, is two pi over five. So I have an amplitude of four. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four up and one, two, three, four down. And now knowing that it is a cosine graph, the cosine does not go through the origin. It starts up here. And each of those notches is an important point. It's either an X intercept or it's a minimum or a maximum. It's one of those three things, either a min, a max, or an X intercept. So my cosine is gonna go start up here. Then that's an intercept. That's a minimum, that's an x-intercept, and that's a maximum. So that would be one period of my cosine graph. All right, any questions yet? Wait, how'd you get three over 10? The three yeah. yeah, so that, that's always the hardest. This is always the hardest one to get. So we get our period from doing two pi divided by that number. So that goes here. Okay, so get that number first. And then I think in order, you then want to get this number next. And you get that number by taking half of the period. So you're taking that and dividing by two. So that's going to be, you know, two pi over 10, which is pi over five. Okay, so that's halfway there. Now I'm getting to your question because I know you asked about this one, but that's the last one you want to find. So you find that one first, that one second, then that one third. So to take half of pi over five, we get pi over 10 because you multiply the bottom by two again. But once you get that guy, that's like your counter, that's your, your scale. So you think of it, that's one pi over 10. Then that's two pi over 10. Then that means that has to be three pi over 10. So you find your counter and then you just count over three spaces. And then why would be like two pi over five be like the fourth? Well, yeah, it's because of this. So it's always two pi divided by the number in front of X. Okay. Okay. So, so we, go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I think I get it now. All I right. just didn't know that. No, this is good, good questions. All right, let's do a, a similar example, okay? Let's say we have Y equals uh, how about negative three sine of three X. I'm going to change that negative three to a negative five out front just so we don't confuse the threes. So Y equals negative five sine of three X. So let's first just write down the amplitude and period. The amplitude is going to be five. It's always the absolute value of the number out front. That means it's gonna go up to five, down to negative five, up to five, down to negative five. 
the period is always 2 pi divided by that number in front of x. So 2 pi over 3. So once we have our period, we put our four notches here. And the fourth notch, that's going to be our period, 2 pi over 3. So now we're going to find halfway there. Half of 2 pi over 3 would be 2 pi over 6, or pi over 3. Now we're going to find halfway there. Half of pi over 3 is pi over 6. Okay, again, you multiply the bottom by 2. So that pi over 6 is our scale or our counter. So that's going to be 1 over 6, 2 over 6, 3 over 6. Don't forget 3 over 6 is 1 half or pi over 2. All right, now I know I have an amplitude of 5. Put five up and five down there. And this is a sine graph. So remember, sine does go through the origin. So it's gonna it's gonna start here. Okay, I say start, it doesn't really start there because it does continue to go to the left, but for drawing purposes. And I'm going to erase this in just a second. So you can hold off on writing it on your notes if you want to, but a sine graph would go through the origin, then that's a max, then that's an intercept, then that's a min, and then it starts over again. It just does the same thing over and over and over again. The reason I have to erase that is because I missed, or I left out one important detail. That's this negative sign. A negative sign flips the graph over the x-axis. So because we have that negative sign, I'm going to take that green graph and flip it over the x-axis so it now looks like that. And the purple graph is our final answer. All right, now again, if you guys have questions, please just make sure that you shout them out. I'll... So, yep. I guess I thought that like the amplitude, like on the last problem, we started at four. So in my mind, thinking like the amplitude was five, I thought we'd start at five. But is it because it's the, sine, that Because of that, that is the amplitude there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But because it's sine and not cosine. Oh yeah. So we went through the origin, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. If it was a cosine graph, it would have started up here at, at five. Correct. So that one, yeah, because it was a sine graph and not a cosine graph. Very good question. All right, let's try, uh, let's try another one here. So we have y equals, that was a sine graph, right? All right, let's do negative two. Cosine.
of 8 pi x. All right, first we're going to find the amplitude. And the amplitude is always the absolute value of the number out front, so that will be 2. Then we're going to find the period. The period we get by doing 2 pi divided by the number in front of the x. Well, we have 8 pi in front of the x now. So there's a pi in there, so that's a little different. But it's 2 pi divided by 8 pi for the period. And 2 pi over 8 pi reduces to 1 fourth. So, yep. Um, why do we put positive 2 for this problem, but the other one we put for the amplitude negative 5? Uh, let me go up to that one. Um, I... I don't think I did. If I did, I shouldn't have. The amplitude is never negative. The amplitude is positive five. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's always the, good question. It's always the absolute value, okay? So even if that's a negative number, the negative just flips the graph over the axis, but the amplitude is always positive because it's actually a distance. It's the absolute value. Okay. Okay. All right, so for our next one, we have a period of one fourth. So that means that fourth notch is going to be one fourth. Half of that, so find, you know, halfway there first. So you multiply the bottom by two, that's going to be one eighth. Half of that will be 1 16th. And now 1 16th is our counter. 1 16th, 2 16th, 3 16ths. We have an amplitude of two, and it's a cosine graph. Now this is kind of getting back to the question we had in the last one. Um, so it's not gonna go through the origin because it's a cosine graph. Now I'm gonna draw it in green because I'm gonna erase it in a second. I'm gonna flip it in just a second. But if it was just co two cosine, then it would look like this. But now <clears throat> I have to take that graph and flip it over the x axis. So when we do that, it's through negative two, and that's an intercept, and it goes through there. And that purple graph will be one period of that cosine graph. All right, um, any questions before I have you guys try some? I have some. Yeah. Um, I was wondering why, okay. I was wondering how you got three over 16. Yep. Yeah, that's always the, this one is, uh, this is always the hardest one to find, okay? So it, if I lose you in this process, let me know as soon as I lose you. But we have a period of 1 over 4 because of this, okay? And once we know one, of, 1 over 4 is the period, we then find halfway to the period, which is 1 over 8. We just multiply the denominator by 2. And then once we know one over eight, 
we know one over 16 because that's halfway again, we multiply the denominator by two. So we found this one first, then this one, then this one, until we before uh, did all that before we answered your question, which is how, where did the 3 16ths come from? Well, once we get that first one, that then is, that's our scale. That's how much each of these notches is worth. So you just count three of those because we want to go over three notches. So if each one is one sixteenth, that's one sixteenth, that's two sixteenths, that's three sixteenths. So we got three sixteenths because it's three of these guys. Okay, thank you so much. That okay. made a right. lot more sense. All right. Yes, good questions here today. See, this is good. We need a little interaction. Um, is there anything else before we, we're going to do a couple in class kick? I guess I still don't really understand how you got through 16, but. Do you also, follow, do you follow to the one sixteenth? I, yeah. All right. So whenever you, so as soon as you get that first one, then this is going to be three of those. So if that's one sixteenth, we then count, you know, 1 16, 2 16, 3 16. We count three of the first notch. So, for example, here, our first notch was pi over 6. So then I want to count three of those. So that's 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6. And 3 over 6 is a half. Okay. Okay, yeah. And yeah. here. So we got, yeah, sure. We got one over 10, pi over 10, one over 10, two pi over 10, three pi over 10. Okay. Yes. All right. So from that class kick, I'm going to do a couple of these examples to go over them, but I am more than happy to go through as many as, as you guys want. Uh, but just to start off with the first couple, it was just asking for period and amplitude. So for the first one, uh, the amplitude is four and the period is two pi over five, okay? This is the amplitude, the absolute value of that. And two pi divided by the number in front of X is the period. So for the second one, the amplitude is six. The period is two pi over four pi, which of course reduces to one half. All right, if you want me to go over any of those or I go too quickly, please let me know. I'm going to start with 2B. So I know that my amplitude is 3, so I'm going to put 3 notches. My period is 2 pi over pi over 2. So that's kind of ugly looking. Now, when you divide by a fraction, remember you can take the bottom and flip it over and make it multiplication. So I flipped over the bottom and wrote it as times two over pi, in which case the pi's cancel and we have a period of four. Okay, I did two pi divided by pi over two and that reduced to just four, not four pi. So when I put my notches, that's four. So the numbers are just one, two, three, four. Now, some of you guys did not, um, you had your, had your notches on there, but didn't scale it. Please make sure you do that, especially on a quiz. If you just put four notches there, then I have no idea if you know what the period is or not. Um, it's cosine graph. So cosine, you know, starts up at three, so it's gonna look, oh, it's really thick. How about this guy? Starts up at three, comes down here to negative three, back up. So that would be one period of that cosine graph. All right, um, I will do B first. 
And then again, I'm happy to do any of the others, but the amplitude is two. So I'm gonna positive two and negative two, I'm gonna put two notches there. Period will be two pi over pi, which is just two. So that means from my four notches, that's two, that's gonna be one, Half of one, of course, is one half. And so that's half, that's two halves, that's three halves, that's four halves. Okay, so that usually is written as a fraction. Some of you wrote that as one and a half, which is okay. You know what you're doing for sure. It typically is written as an improper fraction though. Now a cosine graph usually looks like this, where it starts up here, comes down and goes back up. However, don't forget the negative sign means we have to flip this over the X axis. Okay, which takes it and just turns it upside down. So your final graph is going to be this purple one here. And I'll get rid of the green guy. All right, so I'll do um, I'm, I'll do this guy just so we have a sign graph. Uh, we have an amplitude of three. We have a period of two pi over two, which is a period of pi. So that means that this is going to be pi. Okay, now again, I find that one first, so that's half of pi or pi over two. Half of that will be pi over four. And that again is, is my scale or counter. One over four, two over four, three over four. So that third one is gonna be three pi over four. And guys, when I grade a quiz, I'll be honest with you, that's the first place I look. Because if you got that one right, you almost surely got the other ones right. Okay, because that's the hardest one to get. All right, now it's a sine graph. Sine is going to go through the origin. So it's going to go through the origin, maximum, then through the origin, minimum, um, not origin, through the axis, and then at pi. Okay, so it has, you know, those three x-intercepts that we've seen there. And it goes on forever. It goes on all the way to the right, all the way to the left. Okay, uh, any questions on that, guys? All right, and these questions were given to you where you were given the equation, but you might have to work a little backwards. Like I might say, hey, if the period is pi, write the equation. Well, you then would have to say, well, then two pi divided by what is gonna be pi so you know that this has to be two, and that's gonna be the number that goes in front of the X. So being able to do these is great that we're able to do these so far. And as we work more with them, we wanna be able to also work in reverse order. 